I'm going to show you how to do this necklace I'm calling Falling Leaves. Now, this is a herringbone stitch that we will fringe through on the bottom and then do an embellishment on the top. I like messing with herring bones. I've done the pretty pebbles and the fancy bone, which was all just fringing and um, decorating a herring bone stitch. I thought maybe long fringes would look really nice on it. So that's what I did this time. I just did a bunch of long fringing through a herring bone stitch. So um, let's see what it's going to take to do this project. Now, let me tell you in advance, it's going to take a lot of beads to do this project. And um, these check beads that I'm using, these leaves, you do not necessarily have to use the same kind. You can use a vertical drilled, you can use a drop pearl, you can use anything top drilled, vertical drilled, whatever you want. You just have to do a fringing stitch if you use a vertical bead. If you use a top uh, drilled, then you can just go through it. You can also just put a pearl at the end of it, just like an eight millimeter pearl. You could put a crystal at the end of it. You can do anything you want with this. Don't make yourself feel like you're limited to what I've used. This is a basic herringbone tubular. This is basic fringing and that works with almost any kind of bead if you just modify it slightly to fit your beads. So feel as if you can do this. You can use you could use all kinds of different colors types and make it just a um, uh, bead soup type of thing too. You can do this in a billion different ways. Anyway, let's look and see what we need to do this project. Okay, so I'm going to show you the beads I'm going to use for this project. Now, don't feel as if you have to use the same beads. This project is a project that you could use any type of bead you want to. Now, people are going to ask me, I'm, I'm using these check leaves. They're top drilled, so the little holes in the top and it's horizontal. Um, these leaves are Picasso finished. Now, I bought them a while back from York Beads and they're no longer in business. So your best bet if you want these is to look on Etsy or just do a search because I cannot tell you exactly where you can get them um, since the place that I got them from is no longer in business. So just do some checking around if that's what you want to use. And you're going to need a lot of them. And I will give you a better approximation or at least an approximation of how many we will use um, in caption. Now, you, like I said, this doesn't have to even be a horizontal top drilled bead. It can be a vertical one and you can just change a stitch and, and instead of going through the top of the hole, you can go through the vertical hole, put a little seed bead in, and then go back up and do a vertical um, fringing stitch too. So don't feel like you're stuck with any kind of beads. You can use pearls, you can use uh, bicones, you can use a top drilled crystal, you can use anything you want for this. I'm just going to use some check leaf beads. Leaf beads. Now you're going to also need a lot of seed beads. I'm using two colors of 11 O's and these are Toho's. One's a metallic bronze and one is a jet black. Then I'm also going to use two colors of 8 O seed beads. One is a metallic bronze and one is a jet black. I'm also going to use two colors of 4 millimeter fire polish beads. Now this one is a Jonquil, I believe that's how you say it. And this one is um, like an AB finish tan. I do not remember the name of it. Some of these beads I just got in a big package that I ordered and um, I don't know, they were not labeled. I don't know exactly what they are. So um, if you know, great, but um, it's just kind of a little tan AB finished uh, four millimeter fire polish bead. And like I said, I will put the numbers in caption. And then you'll need a toggle clasp. I'm using this little copper toggle clasp for mine today. I'm also going to use Smoke Fireline. I'm going to use 10 pound today because that's what I have in Smoke. And also because this is going to be a heavy type of necklace and 10 pound Fireline will work well. If you want to use 8, that's fine too. And I'm using a size 10 beading needle. So let's go ahead and get okay, started. Okay, so we're going to start with our tubular herringbone stitch. And I'm going to use my 8 seed beads. I'm going to start by picking up a black one and a bronze one. And I'm going to bring it down to the end of my thread. I'm going to leave a fairly long tail, or at least enough to um, extend later, because we'll need it for our clasping. So I'm just going to leave, I don't know, about 6 inches. 
and then you can leave longer if you want to otherwise just enough to extend like I said now I've got my two little beads here I'm going to go back up through the first one I put on my stitch or on my thread like this this is going to lay the beads side by side side by side we're going to be doing a ladder stitch to start our herringbone stitch let's get a little closer so that you can see what I'm doing now they're lying side by side I'm going to go back through them and tighten them up so I'm just going back through both beads so I'm back into my first bead which is my black one I'm going to go into my second bead then I'm going to pick up a black bead onto my needle like this and I'm going to go back down I'm coming out of this um, little bronze bead down here I'm going to go into the other side and I'm going to pull this black bead down that's going to lay it straight out too now I'm going to go back up through it tighten my thread then go back down through the bronze bead just like this now I'm going to go back up through the black bead then I'm going to pick up a bronze bead I'm coming out of the black bead here I'm going to go into the opposite side just like this lay my bead out and then I have to tighten and secure it so I'm going to sew back down through the bronze bead and then back up through the black bead right here and then in order to get myself ready to put the next one in I'm going to go back down through the bronze bead now I've got four beads I want six so I'm going to pick up one more black bead I'm coming out of this end I'm going to go into the opposite end of the bronze bead I'm going to go back through my black bead go back down through my bronze bead back up through my black bead so basically you're just sewing back through it just to tighten it make sure your tension is good and everything is really nice and neat and then pick up one more bead because we have five let's pick up one more I'm going to pick up my bronze bead and I'm going to I'm coming out this side I'm going to go into the opposite side pull my bead down and then sew into the bronze bead sew into the black bead just like that now I want to sew back into my bronze bead here and now I have six beads in a ladder stitch just like that now I want this to be a tubular herringbone to start with I will flatten it as I make my design but I want it to be tubular so I am coming out of this bronze bead here I'm going to wrap my little six beads around with my tail <clears throat> coming out of the bottom of the bronze bead I am going to go into the bottom of the black bead just like this pull them tight let's get even a little closer then I'm going to go back into the bronze bead so I'm just connecting the two together just like this I'm going to do that a couple of times <clears throat> sewing through the black one then back through the bronze one just to ensure that this is nice and stable and I'm going to come back up through the black and then I'm going to go through the bronze bead and then I am going to sew into my next black bead just to get away from my joint here to start with just like this now I'm going to start my tubular herringbone stitch what I'm going to do is I'm coming out of a black bead so I'm going to pick up a black one and then I'm going to go into the bronze one so I will need a black one then a bronze one so that I stay making my colors the same because I want lines of colors I don't want them to be um, hodgepodge or mismatched or anything like that checkerboard I want them to be stripes so I'm going to pick up my black one I'm going to pick up my bronze one I'm coming out of the black bead I'm going to go right into the bronze bead and 
pull my beads down and they're just going to kind of lie like that. Then I'm going to go into the next bead right here and I'm going to pick up a black bead and then a bronze bead. I'm going to go, I'm coming out of this black bead, I'm going to go into this bronze bead right here and pull them down. Turn my work and then come up through the next bead, which happens to be a black bead. So, let me try to get my tail out of the way here. So I'm going to pick up a black bead and a bronze bead and I'm going to come down into the bronze bead. Just like that. Now I've made it all the way around. And as you do this, you'll find you'll see that you're just going to have stacks that are kind of separate. They'll join together as we go through them and step up. Now we have to step up to get to our next one. So we're coming out of this little bronze bead right here. We're going to go through both of these black beads next to it. Right there, just like that. Let me back off a little bit again. Okay. Let me make sure everything's nice and tight. Okay, so I'm coming out of the black bead. I'm going to pick up a black bead and a bronze bead. I'm going to go through this bronze bead and then pick up the next black bead, just like this. Pull them tight. Lay them out. And now I'm already coming through my next black bead. So I'm going to pick up a black bead and a bronze bead. And I'm going to come down into the first, into the just the top bronze bead here. Now, I didn't pick up my next one, but you can if you'd like. I decided not to do that so I won't confuse you. I'm going to lay my beads out. <laughs> Maybe. There we go. And then we're going to pick up the next bead, just the top bead here, just like this. And we're going to pick up a black bead and a bronze bead. And we're going to come through the bronze bead right here. Now, we've finished all three of our stacks, so we need to step back up. If you look at my piece, you will see that my thread is coming out right here. I always want to go into the bead horizontal of it. So instead of just picking up the top bead this time, when I step up, I will pick up this bead and this bead. And the way you can tell is that your thread will always be completely horizontal to where you need to pick it up. So since my thread is coming out here, I'm going to pick up or go in right here and come up through both of these beads right here to start my next row. Now I'm going to start working around my row again. This time I'm going to pick up the top beads till I get to my very last row where I have to step up. So this is how I want to move through my work just like this. I'm going to pick up a black bead. I'm going to pick up a bronze bead. I'm going to go through this bronze bead because I'm coming out of this black bead and then I'm also going to pick up the next top black bead. I'm going to pull my beads down, lay them out. As you get going they'll lay out a little bit nicer for you too. Then I'm coming out of my black bead already so I'm going to pick up my black bead, my bronze bead. I'm going to go into the next bronze bead and up through the next black bead just like this. And pull my beads. Now I'm going to pick up a black bead and a bronze bead and I'm going to come through the black or through the bronze bead right here. Now this is where I need to step up. That's why I didn't grab the next one. Every time you finish your third row, you will, or your third double rows, you will need to step up so you need to pick up two beads and again like I told you you can just check your thread your thread is coming out right here you want to go into the bead directly next to where your thread is coming out and then step up and then we'll go ahead and start another row 
So we're coming out of the black bead. We will pick up, let me back off just a little, I can't stay in frame. We'll pick up a black bead, a bronze bead, go through the bronze bead, and then into the next black bead. Then we'll pick up a black bead, a bronze bead, and into the next bronze bead and pick up the next black bead. Now this is my third row, so I'll pick up a black bead, a copper or a bronze bead, come through the bronze bead on my stack, and then come through two black beads on my next one. Right there. And then I'll start my sequence again. We'll do one more and then we're just going to keep doing this until we get to our desired length. So I'm going to pick up a black bead, a bronze bead, go into the bronze bead, scooch over and pick up the black bead in the next stack. Pick up a black bead, a bronze bead, go through the bronze bead, pick up the black bead in the next stack. And then again, pick up a black bead, pick up a bronze bead, go through the bronze bead, and then go through two of the black beads in your next stack to step up right here. And we're just going to continue doing that. And you can see how it's making us little stripes here. We're going to continue doing that until we get the desired length we want. I'm going to make 18 inches of um, herringbone. So all you'll need to do is use your bead board or a ruler and keep going until you measure the length you want. If you want a 20 inch necklace, then go 20 inches. If you want a 16 inch inch necklace go 16 inches you get the picture here so keep going until you get to the length you, length you want and we'll be back okay so I have finished my herringbone and I have made it 18 inches long I just put it on my bead board and measured it to make sure it was as long as I wanted and by the time I clasp it I'll get another half inch inch depends on how I clasp it but I'm coming out of the end here and now we have to tighten our ends up and make them the same as this side. This side's all closed down and looks nice. This side's still in kind of the stackable form that it takes as you're making the herringbone. So what we need to do, let's get close here. Maybe that's a little too close. What we need to do is I'm coming out of this black bead right here after making my herringbone stitch. I'm going to go into the next stack over here and go into the um, 11 out here and then I'm going to go back up through the black one and then I'm going to go back down through the bronze one and then I'm going to turn my piece and move to my next black one. Go up through it, go down through the gold or the bronze one, go up through the gold one. So I'm just gathering it together like a ladder stitch. So I'm coming out of this black one now. I'm going to go into the bronze one the black one, the bronze one. If you want to, you could do two beads down. I'm just doing the top layer. So let me go back into this one here, back into the bronze one, and turn around my piece and go into the next bead. Maybe. Right there. There we go. And then tighten that one up a little bit. See if I can get into that one better than I did before. There we go. And then into the next one. So basically I'm just sewing all the way around, joining the top beads together. Now you can see I pulled it as I'm doing my last section here. I pulled it completely tight and nice. And I come out of this black one here. Then I'm going to grab the thread bridge and um, I'm just going to tie a half hitch knot right here. Now, usually when I'm at the end of a necklace, I will go ahead and clasp. I'm not going to do this this time because I don't want it to squish up my um, herringbone funny. I want my herringbone to flatten out as I do my um, embellishments. 
and I'm just going to start bottom embellishments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this row of black. I'm coming out right here. I'm going to use this row completely to do all my fringing in. So I'm going to go through the first bead here and then I'm going to start a fringing stitch. And with my first one, I want to make the longest. Now, you can use any combination of beads you want to do this. We're going to make three layers of fringe. The first layer will be the longest, the second layer will be shorter, and the third layer will be even shorter than that. So you want to start with your longest layer, and you can use any combination of beads you want. You can use crystals, you can use um, drop beads, you can use whatever you want to make your end um, fringe. I'm going to start with 10 of my 11 OC beads in black. And then I'm going to pick up a bronze 80 like this. I'm going to back off a little so you can see what I'm doing a little better. I'm going to pick up a bronze 80 and then I'm going to pick up one of my fire polish beads like this. I'm going to use this color for my longest embellishment, the Jonquil, or whatever it's called. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. I always do, but that's okay. And then another Edo bronze. I'm going to drop it down. And then I'm going to pick up three black 11 O seed beads, an Edo bronze, and then I'm going to pick up this color of my leaf here and I'm just going to go through the top of my leaf. Now for this, like I said, you can use a drop bead, you can use, you can actually use a crystal, go through the vertical hole and then put 11 at the bottom, come around the 11 and come back up through too. You don't have to use a top drilled bead, but I'm using a top drilled bead today. Just be creative and make your own combination. That way it won't limit you on what beads you have. You can make this necklace regardless. Then now that I've done this part, I need to come back up so that I can um, connect to my necklace again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up an 80 and I'm going to copy this other side. I'm going to pick up three 11 OC beads and then to join my fringe together, I'm just going to come through this little bronze bead right here, the fire polish bead and the bronze bead on top of it. So I'm just going to come up these three beads. I'm going to hold on to my piece here, tighten everything up, make sure it's not twisted or weird, and then I'm going to pick up 10 more 11 O seed beads to come up to the top of my piece. So I have my 10 11 O's here. Now I'm going to skip, I'm coming out of this 11 -0 here to start with, I'm going to skip oh, three of my beads and I, three of my 11 O's in my herringbone here. So I'm coming out of this one, I'm going to count one, two, three, then I'm going to go into the fourth bead here. Actually, I'm going to go into the third bead. I think the third bead, yeah. So I'm going to skip two 11 O's and go into the third bead and pull it up like this. And then I will start another fringe. So I will just pick up exactly what I picked up before and do the exact same thing. So I will pick up four, five, ten, eleven O seed beads. Oh, come here. Ten, like this. And then I will pick up, my next one will be an eight O. The one after that will be my fire polish bead. The next one after that will be an 80. And then I'm to here, so now I'm going to pick up these three black 11 O's. And then a bronze 80. And then my leaf. And I'm going to do the bottom layer all in the same color leaf. So I'm going to pick up this one, drop it down. I'm going to pick up an 80. And then three 11 O's. I'm going to come back up through these three beads here, the 80, and the fire polish bead, and the 80, just to join my fringe together here, and pull it tight, 
and then I'm going to pick up 10 more 11 o seed beads. And I'm going to skip two beads in between. So I'm going to go one, I'm coming out of this one, I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to go into this one. Now I didn't do math to make sure that when I get to the end it'll be a perfect three um, space of beads because in this necklace it doesn't have to be perfect. We, we can improvise as we get to the end here. So that is what I'm going to do all the way the entire length of this necklace, staying on the same row of black beads in my herringbone, making sure I don't go into a row underneath. That is why I wanted to have rows of bronze and black and then bronze so that I could see my one my rows clearly and know where I'm at as I'm doing this part. Otherwise, it could get confusing. So anyway, I'm going to do this entire embellishment, the length of my necklace, and we will be back. Okay, so I have finished my entire row of my first fringing stitch with my um, seed beads and my little leaf. Now I am coming out of the end and my number of beads happened to work out perfect. By the time I got to the end, when I counted over my three beads, I was exiting just the end bead just perfectly. Now if yours doesn't work out perfect, just exit out the last one, whether it be two in between, one in between, more than one, four, whatever. Um, it won't matter that much. Just exit out the end. Of course, you don't want like six or ten or something silly like that. But if it's not perfect number of beads in between, that's okay. Now... I'm coming out of the end here. I'll show you where I'm at. Right at the very last um, bead here in the row that I'm fringing. Now I want to start a row on top of this row. So I'm just going to kind of push these down. And what I want to do is secure my thread at the end here by going under one of the thread bridges up here on the end of our herringbone stitch. Let's just go through one. Oops, I pulled through without making a knot. Pull through, make a half hitch knot, and that way we can turn around back into the bead without um, pulling out our fringing. So we're going to go back into this bead. Now we want our next set of fringes to hang kind of between the existing ones right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into right here. Let's get even closer so you can see since these are black beads here. I'm going to go into two so that I'm in the middle of my fringe stitch. Now, if your beads didn't work out perfect on the end, just make sure you're coming in the middle of your existing fringe stitch. And then pull your needle through. And now we have our thread positioned in the proper spot to start our next um, fringing stitch. What I want to do with this one is I want to pick up, I'm going to pick up three of my bronze beads and then I'm going to back off so you can see here a little bit better. I'm going to pick up three bronze beads and then I'm going to pick up a fire polished bead and then I'm going to pick up three bronze beads, a black 8-0 and then I'm going to start with my red leaves. So I'm going to pick up a red leaf now, like I said, it could be any beads you want. Just make it another color or it could be the same. It doesn't matter. So whatever you're using, use things that complement each other. Then I'm going to pick up another 8-0. Then I'm going to pick up three uh, bronze beads. And I'm going to drop these down. I'll show you what I have. I have, let's get close again. I have three bronze beads, a fire polish bead, three bronze beads, a black 8-0, my leaf, a black 8-0, and three bronze beads. Then I'm going to come back up through my fire polish bead right here to join my fringe together here. And then I'm going to count over so that I'm coming out into the middle of my next one 
I'm going to count one, two, three. I am going to skip two beads again. So I'm coming out of this one right here. I'm going to skip one, two, and then I'm going to go into the third one right here. But first I need to pick up three 11 O's to finish out my fringing. So I'm going to pick up my three 11 O's, drop them down. Now I have a complete fringe and then I'm, I'm coming out of this bead. I'm going to count one, two, and then go into the third one right here and pull my tail out of the way and that's my second layer of fringe I've started so let's do one more we're coming out of this bead right here we are going to pick up three of our bronze 11 oz seed beads and then we'll pick up our next color of four millimeter um, fire polish three more 11 O's. I'll pick up a black 8 O, my red leaf, a black 8 O, and I'll drop this down just because it's getting too much on my needle. I'll pick up three more of my bronze because I have to match this size so I'll pick up three more and then now that we have fringe on everything our thread's going to get caught on everything. Then we're going to come up through the fire polish bead right here to join the fringe together and then we will pick up three more 11 O seed beads like this and then we will count we're coming out of this one one two go into the third one in the same row we've been working in don't go into another row of the herringbone. Stay in the black row that we started in, or whatever row you started in, whatever color it is. Stay in that row and just work on top of your last layer of fringe, making sure not to go underneath it with your thread. Stay okay, so on top. I've worked my fringe a little ways down, and as I've done this, I have found out that it's kind of difficult to go through the herringbone stitch because the herringbone stitch is curved the other direction. When we put our first layer on, the herringbone stitch was the proper direction to just slide right through it. This one, it's the opposite direction, so you have to go at an angle. Plus, you're trying to keep your new layer of fringe on top of your old layer of fringe without getting your needle underneath and getting your thread tied underneath the last layer because each layer needs to lay on top of the last to look correct. So what I'm going to show you is how I've been doing this. Now I've got a fringe on here. All I need is three more of my 11 O's here. Push those down. My fringe is complete. I'm coming out of this bead right here. Let's get really close. I'm coming out of this bead right here. I'm going to count one, two. I want to go into the third one. I have to go at an angle like this. Then I have to push everything out of the way. So it kind of become a contortionist. Everything has to be out of the way. Make sure that your thread comes out on top. Your thread will want to go underneath other fringe parts. It's just a real pain. So just pull it out like this. Lay it nice and neat on top and then do your next one. Now, as I said, it's just quite a process. But I wanted to show you, you need to really take your time with this necklace so that it turns out really nice because it is, it's going to be quite pretty. But we, it does take some time. So just be really patient with it and kind of finagle your way through. And as you go through, you'll figure out how to put your stitches on very neatly. Okay, so I have finished the entire second embellishment all the way around, and now I'm coming out of the end here. Let's get a little closer. I'm going to turn this necklace so that it's more accessible to my right hand. So, after coming out of my very last embellishment, I am coming out of the little black bead on the end here, and we're going to do the same thing we did before. Let's get a little closer. We are going to make sure that our last fringe is tight, hold on to it, grab a thread bridge on the original herringbone and pull a half hitch knot through, oops, don't tangle it, there we go, 
this much fringe and just you're gonna get tangled so just do that a little bit more carefully than I did and make sure that your last fringe is tightened back up like this and then come back through the same bead that you exited again and now we're going to do our last fringe and I'm going to use a fire polish bead and this is going to be just instead of having a top drilled bead or a top drilled yeah bead I'm just going to go through it um, like you do for normal fringing and um, you can do this stitch this way through the whole thing too so that you can use any type of bead you want if you have vertical hold beads then you can do this or any type of bead actually so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a bronze, a black, a bronze 11 OC bead, and then I'm going to pick up my little fire polish bead. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to pick up a black 11 OC bead, bring it down. I'm going to go around. I'm going to bring this over here so you can see it better. I'm going to go around the 11 O and then just into the fire polish bead. Just do a traditional fringing stitch, pull your thread through, tighten it up. And then we are going to pick up a bronze, a black, and a bronze 11 O seed bead, like this. And let's get, uh, I can't tell, it's so dark, such dark beads, I can't tell on my camera if you can see it well or not, but I'm hoping you can. I'm coming out of the um, little fire part polish bead here. Now I want this to kind of be centered where my other ones are not. So let's see, we're going to go, coming out of that one, we're going to skip. Let's see, we'll go into uh, one, two, three. We'll go into the fourth bead. Right here. So I'm coming out of this one, I'm going to count three, and then I'm going to go into the fourth bead. Just like this. That way it will kind of be centered in between our last fringing stitch. Then we want each layer to be seen and visible. So I'm trying to center each layer between the last two layers. Let's do another one. Pick up a bronze, a black, a bronze, 11 O seed bead, then a four millimeter fire polish, and then a black seed bead or whatever colors you're using, doesn't matter. Bring them down and then go around the 11 seed bead and up through the fire polish bead. Pull them down tight. You want to hold on to them because if you pull them up too quickly and if you don't have a hold of your beads, your thread will wrap around your other fringing stitches and drive you crazy tangle all up and at this point there's a lot of work into this necklace you don't want to tangle it all up and get it to where you can't untangle it okay so now we're coming out of this fire polish bead pick up a bronze a black and a bronze like this okay then we're coming out of this one right here right here so we're going to count four from the one we're coming out of one two, three, and then go into the fourth black bead on the herringbone. I have to figure out which way. That, there we go. Straight up this way. Now you got to remember the herringbone is kind of turned, so you have to, the beads lay at an angle, so you have to figure out what angle that is so you can go into it. That's the only disadvantage of working through a herringbone. But other than that, it's pretty simple. So let's do one more little fringing stitch. We're going to pick up a bronze, a black, a bronze, a fire polish bead, a black, 11 OC bead. Like this. Bring it down. Go around the 11 O right here. Up into the fire po polish bead, just the fire polish bead and hold on to your thread and kind of guide your thread up. Pull tight onto the 
fire polish bead and the little bottom bead. Make sure it's all tightened up. And then pick up a bronze, a black, and a bronze 11 OC bead like this. And then I am going to count. I'm coming out of this bead right here. I'm going to count one, two, three, and then go into the fourth one right here. Just like this. Now we're going to do this the entire length of the necklace and then we'll be back. Okay, so I have finished my entire third layer of fringing. <clears throat> and um, as you can see, it lays pretty nicely. But I want to do a little embellishment on the top in the very top gold beads here. Since my fringe are coming on the very bottom black beads, I want to use the beads exactly opposite of them to kind of keep my um, necklace flat, my herringbone to kind of flatten it out and have it lay into a circle a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm coming out of, let's get real close, I'm coming out of this bead right here, this little black bead after putting right here, after putting my last embellishment on my little fire polish bead. Now this one didn't come out perfect so I had to skip over one bead and actually what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to back out of this. Instead I skipped over um, five beads instead of four to make my embellishment and it stretched out a little too much so I'm just going to go through the last, the fourth one instead of the fifth one again like this and then just come out of the last bead and like I said you can kind of modify the ends here if your count isn't perfect because the way that it lays with all the fringing it's kind of random looking anyway so you can modify your ends to make them work now I'm coming out of this little black bead right here I'm going to sew up into the gold bead right above it Actually, let's do a little half hitch knot or our embellishment will get nice and funky. Well, that's not nice, but you know. So I'm just going to grab the thread bridge and the herringbone again, just like we've been doing. Make sure my embellishment is tight and get my tail out of the way and just pull a little half hitch knot. Make sure everything looks good. There we go. Now that's secure, and as I work my way to the top beads, I don't have to worry anymore about that thread coming loose and my embellishments coming loose. So now, or my fringes anyway. So now I'm going to go into this gold bead here, and then I'm going to go into the bottom of the black bead. This little thread tied up here, but that's okay. Then I'm going to go through, I'm coming out of this little black bead, I'm going to go through the top gold bead, and I'm going to pick up two of them and come through, just like this. Then I'm going to pick up a black bead, a bronze bead, and a black bead in my 11 O's, like this. And I'm going to, I'm exiting here, I'm going to come back through the two beads that I originally went through and then pick up two more. So I'll be going through four beads on my herringbone stitch and pull. Just like this. Now I'm going to pick up a black bead and a bronze bead. And I'm going to go into this black bead on my first set and back down through the two beads that I just went that I just went through and then pick up two more. So I'll be going through four beads. Position me for my next little embellishment. So now I'm coming out of these two right here. I'm going to pick up a black bead, a bronze bead, and then I'm going to come through the black bead and the first two beads on my um, herringbone that I'm actually exiting from and then I'm going to pick up two more on my herringbone just like this. So I'm going through four beads on the herringbone and I'm going to pull just like that. So pick up a black bead and a bronze bead 
and then go through the previous black bead of the previous embellishment go through the two beads you're going to embellish and then the next two after that it's easier if you exit out the back of the herringbone let's see one two three four right there simply because that's the angle that the beads are laying at and then pull your beads down like that pull them tightly but make sure they're nice and neat and then one more time black bead bronze bead go through the black bead go through two in the herringbone and then two more past those two and exit and pull now I think you get the idea now that's enough. We're going to go the entire length of the necklace doing this. Then we'll clasp the opposite end when we get down there with our, th our working thread. Then we'll come back to this side and clasp it with our tail. And my tail will need to be extended. If you need to extend yours, you'll have to do that also. But I wanted you to see how the thread looks in this embellishment so you don't think you're doing it wrong. Oops. Blur. See how they kind of move on the thread? On the necklace, when it's finished, I really like that. So I just leave it that way. Now you can pull it a little tighter if you want, but really, it's okay. It gives it a little bit of movement and it doesn't look bad. I like it. So it's up to you how you want to do it. I just didn't want you to think you're doing it wrong. And we'll be back when I finish okay, my Okay, so I have finished my last embellishment of my herringbone. And um, as you can see, and now I am coming out let me get real close here. I am coming out of this last bead. I did my last embellishment. I had one bead left over, so I just came down through it, which is fine. Like I said, on the ends, you can kind of um, mess with it a little bit to get it to work out just fine for you. And then I'm coming out here, so now I need to put my clasping on. So I'm going to pick up about three 11 0 seed beads in my bronze color and then I'm going to pick up a fire polish bead in my um, second color here like this and then I'm going to drop it down and then I'm going to come through my clasp and end of my clasp here and then I'm going to go back through my fire polish bead around the clasp and pull it down like this and then I'm going to pick up three more of my bronze seed beads here and I'm going to come into this bottom black bead and just through it just like this <clears throat> then I'm going to sew up the next bead right next to it right here and then I'm going to sew down into the bead next to it you can do two if you'd like it might be easier actually to do two let's go down through two and then back up through the next two and then I'm going to sew back up through my clasping around it back down I'm going to do that and once I get through I'll sew back through the beads on the other side so that let's just do it one time so you can see what I'm talking about so I can balance it so I'm going to back off just a little I'm coming out of my gold or my bronze bead again I'm going to go up through these three bronze beads here I can get my hand to do it and up through the fire polish bead then I'm going to go around the through the clasp again I'm very coordinated right now and then down back into the fire polish bead now you don't want to put your clasp too close you want to have a little bit of room so that you can move in and out pull down go back through the three 11 O's on the opposite side that you started in and down into the bead underneath it 
Now this one you probably just want to go one because you've got all your embellishments and fringing here and you're going to get your thread through messed up. So just go right here. Pull through. Watch your thread and go up into the next bead on this side. <clears throat> Make sure your thread doesn't get tangled in anything. Then you can go down into the next two here. Right here. Then back up into the two gold ones, or the bronze ones actually, here on the top. And then sew through your clasping one more time and sew through your other beads on the other side. And do that as many times as you feel secure and we'll be back and we'll tie it off. Then we'll go to the other side off camera and um, extend our fire line on this side and clasp the other side exactly the same way. Okay, so I've sewn through a few times and secured my clasp. I want to make it sure that you leave a little bit of movement for it. Don't pull it down so tight that you can't get your needle in and out and then your clasping won't move. You want it to be secure, you want it to be strong, but you want to have a little movement in it also. Now, I'm coming out after I did my last embellishment. I came down into my work a little bit. I'm going to come back up into my next set of beads and then I'm going to grab the thread bridge on top of the herringbone here and I'm going to half hitch it go back down into the next two come back up into the next two and then <clears throat> I don't want to knot right there so I'm going to go back down into these two on this side here I'm going to grab a knot down here on the thread bridge. And then I'm going to come back up into my next two in my herringbone here. And I'm going to cut my thread, leaving just a little bit extra right there. And then I am going to melt this down with a little bit of a flame and seal it off. It makes a big blob and it goes right down on there and it'll seal it off so it doesn't slide back through. And it looks pretty good that way too. So let me back off. This is what my clasping looks like on this side here. Now I am going to, I've left some fire line on this side but I did not leave enough to actually sew my clasp through. So what I'll do is I'll trim it down a little bit, I'll extend it down here, get do my extension as close as I can through here so I'm not pulling a knot through constantly, and add my, um, my other side of the clasp. Now if you do not know how to extend your fire line, in a few of my videos I show it, but you can just do a search on YouTube for joining fire line for bead weaving and it'll show you how and otherwise my video will be a, a lot longer. So let's just go ahead and do that off camera, put our clasp on this side, and then I'll come back to show you the finished product. Okay, so I finished my clasping, and this is what the finished necklace looks like. And it's really pretty. I will take a picture of it on a neck model so that you can see how it hangs, and I'll put it at the beginning of the video. And that way you can see what it would look like on a neck and um, why it's called Falling Leaves. Hope you enjoyed this project and we'll see you later. Be creative. Bye-bye.